Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal and in today's video, I'm talking about UTIs. I know you're probably wondering, why are we talking about urinary tract infections? Well, I think it's something that's really, really important to talk about. And it's also something that's really, really common. I mean, you probably had a UTI in your life. I know I've had a UTI and they suck so much. And it's so important to talk about it because there's so many things we can do to prevent them. So before we get into all that, let's talk about what UTIs even are. So a urinary tract infection is when bacteria enters the urinary tract and well, causes infection. Usually bacteria will enter the urethra, make its way to the bladder, and in serious cases, could potentially affect the kidneys as well. With that being said, urethra infections and bladder infections are much more common than kidney infections. And oftentimes, if you're treating urethra and bladder infections, they're not gonna progress to a kidney infection. But it's still important to know that that can happen. And if you end up not treating the UTI, it probably will progress to a kidney infection. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. So the most common sign and symptom is painful or burning urination. So that's probably the one sign that everyone is like, oh, I think I have a UTI when they start to experience that. Another really, really common sign is having urgency to go to the bathroom, but not being able to urinate when you do go to the bathroom. So you might feel like, oh my gosh, I have to pee so bad. And then you go to the bathroom, but then like you can't pee or like the smallest amount comes out. Another symptom could be frequently passing small amounts of urine. And other symptoms include cloudy or discolored urine, as well as possible back pain, pelvic pain, or a low-grade fever. Now, UTIs are diagnosed by a urine test or a culture. A urine sample will just tell your doctor if there's white blood cells present and if there's a lot of them present. Pretty good indication that there's something happening. And a urine culture can tell you like what's causing the infection. So oftentimes, UTIs are caused by E. coli, which is actually found in our digestive tract and often our poop. So if there is any contamination from poop, either from like different um, sexual practices or from wiping back to front instead of front to back, which is what you should be doing, you can potentially like contaminate and cause um, bacteria to get into your urethra, which then could cause a UTI. There's definitely like non-bacterial causes of bladder issues um, as well as kidney and urethra issues. However, in most cases of UTIs and like the UTIs that we're kind of talking about in this video today are mostly caused um, from bacteria. So there is so many risk factors for UTIs. And the biggest risk factor is having like a short urethra, which is really, really common in people with periods because the way that our anatomy works. I mean, if you look at this, like look how short our urethras are. Like they're like little. Whereas if you look at someone who has like a penis, their urethra is super, super long. So a risk factor is having a short urethra, <laughs> which you can't really help. But other risk factors include sexual intercourse. So pretty much like any sexual intercourse, not cleaning sex toys properly, using spermicides has also been shown to increase risk of UTI infection. Other big risks would be improper wiping. So if you're wiping back to front when you go to the bathroom, mm -mm, that's not good. That is going to cause um, a lot of issues. So proper wiping and proper hygiene is super important. It's also really important to make sure you're not holding your urine for a really long time. Holding urine can put you at a higher risk of UTIs. The other thing that could put you at a higher risk of UTIs is hormonal birth control. And if you're pregnant, have diabetes in menopause, have a decreased immune system, have any food sensitivities or allergies, those can also also increase your risk of UTIs. Like I, the, the list goes on. It's really, um, it's really crazy actually how many things can put you at risk <laughs> for UTIs. If you do have symptoms of a UTI, you definitely want to talk to your doctor. It's really important to know like what's going on. There are a few illnesses and a few things that can potentially mimic the symptoms of UTI, especially when it comes to like painful urination. Um, there are certain STIs that can have that symptom as well. You might not know if it's that or a UTI, like who knows, right? So it's really important to talk to your doctor and get like a urine test done just to like make sure what's going on. If you do end up having a UTI, your doctor might prescribe you antibiotics. And so it's really important if you do take the antibiotics to take them for the recommended amount of time until they're finished even if you notice that your symptoms go away after like a day or two, like you, you need to take that, you know, a round of antibiotics if that's what your doctor prescribes you. If you are someone who's looking for more like natural ways that you could potentially prevent UTIs, there are a few things you can do, but I wanna make it very clear that if you try to treat your UTI by yourself and you do not see your symptoms getting better within 12 to 48 hours, you need to talk to your doctor because UTIs have the potential to become kidney infections. And once they move up to your kidneys, 
that's really bad news. We don't want that. So it's really, really important if you look towards more like holistic uh, treatment that you are not putting yourself in a position where things are not getting better and that you're not getting medical help when you need to. A really, really important thing to do if you have a UTI is to increase your fluids. You need to be drinking like lots of fluids because fluids help like flush everything out. Hello. <laughs> I'm in the middle of editing right now and I realized that when I was talking about like holistic treatments when it comes to UTIs I wasn't very clear with what I said. So there's a lot of holistic treatments out there The most common one is like drinking cranberry juice or taking cranberry tablets Unfortunately, there's not a lot of science to back up that cranberry juice can either prevent or treat UTIs and so I just want to let you know that because I don't want you to be like spending all this money on cranberry juice or cranberry tablets hoping that they work and you know maybe they maybe for some people they do but for like a lot of people and when they've looked at studies they just have noticed that like cranberry juice just, just does not work and so I just wanted to be like upfront and clear about that something that does show really promising benefits when it comes to not only um, helping to like prevent reoccurrent UTIs but also potentially helping um, with symptoms when someone is having a UTI is D-mannose and so D-mannose is a simple sugar that actually prevents the adhesion of like bacteria on the urinary tract and so it's been shown many times to be very, very effective um, or at least more effective than a placebo. And so I think that's really important to know. And so D-mannos is something to maybe look into if you're having recurrent UTIs. And then there are a few other kind of herbal remedies, um, some plants like uva ursi that a lot of people talk about to be really helpful for UTIs. Again, when it comes to looking at like scientific evidence, I wasn't able to find um, any like concrete evidence that showed that uva ursi had any like promising benefits when it came to UTIs But it doesn't mean that these things like might not work for you or might not help I'm just trying to be like realistic here And I also think it's really important to know that science doesn't always like fund these things either So there might not be a lot of research just because like there's not a lot of money going into researching these kind of things Who knows but I just thought I would put it out there and I just wanted to be more clear um, When talking about holistic remedies. Let's get back to the video The other thing that could potentially help with UTIs is probiotics and there is potential with vitamin C being helpful because it can boost your immune system if you do go down this route where you want to take these more natural kind of treatment options especially if you have recurrent UTIs and you don't always want to be like on antibiotics it's definitely good to talk to someone about this like your doctor might have some suggestions on dosing or you might be able to talk to another healthcare provider that would be able to give you like dosing suggestions I'm not here to do that. I can't I can't tell you how much of these things you should be taking and when you should be taking them and how often and that kind of thing. I just want you to know that they're out there so you can do your own research and talk to your trusted healthcare provider about them. So now that we've talked about medical treatment options as well as some holistic options out there, I do want to talk about prevention because prevention is key when it comes to UTIs. And so the biggest thing you can do to prevent a UTI, especially if you're sexually active, is to urinate before and after sex. So if you forget to urinate before, no biggie, but like make sure you urinate after. And the reason why that's suggested is because urine can help flush everything out and potentially help flush out like any bacteria that has maybe made it into the urethra. It's also really, really important to clean sex toys after every use. It might even be really helpful if you struggle with chronic UTIs and you do use sex toys to clean them before you use them as well just to make sure they're like really really clean um, another thing too is if you do have anal sex really really important to not go from anal sex to vaginal sex like you don't want to do that unless you are changing the condom or like washing up <laughs> before you do that so um, that's really really important to know because that is a really really easy way that you can introduce bacteria into the urethra when it comes to sex it's really important to use water Base lubes do not use spermicides especially if you have UTI issues like if you are chronically getting UTIs no spermicide for you but spermicide in general is really uncomfortable it can like burn it's not great and so if you can move to like a water-based lube or like a non-spermicidal lube awesome like that's that's going to be much more comfortable now as I said earlier in the video it's so important to wipe from your vagina to your butt from front to back it is so important. The vagina itself is self-cleaning, but it is important to wash like the vulva area. Included in the vulva area is the urethra, if you can see it here. The urethra and the vagina are very close to one another. And so you want to make sure that you're using like water to wash this area or like the most mild soap you can buy. Anything fragranced 
is going to be irritating and has the potential to cause infection. Another really important thing to mention is that cotton underwear is really important and pads actually might increase UTI infection, which is interesting. So if you find that you wear pads and you've struggled with UTIs, maybe switch to a tampon or a menstrual cup or switch to a cloth pads and just make sure that you're changing them often. And of course, diet is really important. So making sure that you're eating healthy, high fiber foods, super great fruits and veggies for the win. If you find that you're having chronic UTI infections and you've tried like everything and you're like, what is going on? I just wanted to let you know that some people are just more prone to UTIs, but some people actually find that there are certain foods that they eat that have the potential to like irritate their bodies and potentially put them at a higher risk for UTIs. It's totally a thing. And so that might be something that you might have to like look into. There might be certain foods that you're eating that are just increasing irritation and just making you more maybe like susceptible uh, to infection. And last but not least, I think it's really important to mention that hormonal birth control can increase risk of UTIs. So if you're using hormonal birth control and you have chronic UTIs or struggle with UTI infection, it could be a root cause of what's going on. So looking towards using a different type or a different form of birth control might be something that's really, really good to look into. So with that being said, I think we're at the end of this video. I hope you learned a lot of like preventative things that you can do to help reduce your risk of UTI. And I hope that you learned the importance of treating your UTI. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I really, really appreciate it. As always, your cycle matters so much and I'm here for you. And I'll see you in the next video.